Hi y'all and welcome to my channel or welcome back to my channel. My name is Amber. If you like what you see today, hit that like and subscribe. And today I have three neutral DIYs for Valentine's Day for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started with DIY number one. Alright, for this first one, if you guys buy candy for Valentine's Day, you guys always see the tubes of candy with like M&M's or Reese's Pieces or whatever in them. And they have the heart-shaped little topper to the tube of candy. Now, I'm just taking my hobby knife. I'm cutting off that bottom round section right at the shape of the heart, trying to keep that heart shape. And then I'm going to wedge it inside that hole that I created and hot glue it in place. And then I am going to take some moss from Dollar Tree and I'm just going to start to coat that heart. And there's several different methods that you can use to covering objects like this with moss. I just apply my hot glue and then stick it down in the moss and pack it on then pull off any scraggler pieces and remove the stringy pieces of glue that sometimes it creates. And I just continue to do this over and over. Now I did take my moss and I put it on this paper plate and I cut it with a pair of scissors into finer pieces. That way I would get maybe a little bit more coverage. And I just made sure that I got the coverage that I wanted. And then... Right here, I am taking my hot glue gun because at the bottom, I had a pretty thick coat of glue. So I'm just creating an indent and then I use my scissors to make a little slit in the plastic and put a kebab stick from Dollar Tree in there for my stem of what is going to be my heart-shaped topiary little tree. Now here I didn't quite care for the blunt flat bottom to the heart, so I took a piece of cardstock paper, cut a little cone out, taped it together, and then slid it over the stick just to give it more of that heart shape, and that way it wasn't so flat on the bottom. And then I'm just going to cover it like I did the plastic heart with glue and the moss. Now here I have a little planter. I know Dollar Tree does sell little planters. This was one that I had saved and was left over from my daughter's little cactus. When we transferred it, I kept it. You could also use K-cups or any little small container of your liking. Now I stuck the stick down in there, glued it. Then I shoved a bunch of rocks down in there to sturdy up the base, plus also add weight. And then this moss I got from Walmart. I'm just taking and covering them rocks with that moss to make it look seamless and tie it all together. Once I get those hot glued, or the moss hot glued down on there, um... I will add some rocks. These are rocks that my kids got from the lake or at one point in time we got some geodes and they cracked those open. I do use one of those and I just pick and choose what I like and add it around the base of that stick just to add some more texture and character to my topiary piece. Now, the little spatula, that's just a um, face mask spatula. You can get them at Dollar Tree. It's got a silicone, silicone tip, and I like using it when working with the hot glue to pack stuff down because it doesn't stick to it. Now, here I'm just taking my Waverly Antique Wax, and I use that on the shish kebab stick just to darken up the, that wood. Make it look a little bit more realistic. Then I add my rocks. 
I also added some pip berry garland from Dollar Tree. I think I got this at Christmas time. I know that they do have Valentine's Day colors out. And you can usually find several different colors. They have green and white, the maroon and red, uh, pink, you name it. They pretty much just got about every color you can think of, really. I add that. I did tack it and glue it in a couple different spots to secure it down. And here it is. This is my little heart-shaped topiary tree. And this could be... Great with farmhouse or any other decor. You could leave it out pretty much all year round if you wanted. On to DIY number two. Now here I have four of the love wood signs from Dollar Tree. And right now I'm just rubbing off any of the little pieces that were hanging on the edge from where they had cut it. You can take a sanding block and sand down them edges. Now here, I was trying to use a big flat screwdriver to pry them staples up. And it was just not working. I end up trying a smaller one that is in a little multi-tool. Guys, I don't recommend the multi-tools. They always end up pinching you they want to collapse and fold up i never have any good luck with the multi-tool i eventually um i did get a few staples up with it but i eventually found one of my fingernail um kit cleaners uh tools and i just took the one that was to clean out from underneath your nails I ended up getting that whole little set at um, Five Below for just a couple dollars. I think there was like five or six tools in it. And I actually use them tools a lot to craft with. So I use it to help pry the nails up. Now here, when I was messing around with the wood and pulling the staples up, I ended up busting the L on this one love sign. So I just take my wood glue and I fill in them cracks and this will be the one that I actually cover in the Waverly Antique Wax. That way it's got more of that natural rustic look even with the glue because once you sand it down it says that you can paint and stain over it but it does not really soak up the stain very well but it does add sort of a rustic character to it so if I ever glue anything like that and I'm not actually painting it I will use my antique wax stain over the top of that because it gives it to me more of a rustic farmhouse look now here I'm just sanding down the glue I did take this to the bathroom and use my blow dryer to speed up the drying process that is because I am very impatient. <laughs> but, I mean, who isn't when it comes to crafting a lot of the times? Blow dryers um, and heat guns, as long as you don't get too close, can speed up the dry time of paint, stain, glue. And it, it can help remove stickers and so on and so forth. And it definitely is a lifesaver, in my opinion. Now here, this is just the Prang Dollar Tree acrylic paint. I use red, pink, green, and then I use my Waverly Wax. Now, I'm putting this in my little paint tray, and in each of them spots, I do have a few drops of water that's been added to that paint. And I'm just sort of using these paints as a stain. I want the wood grain to come through. So I don't want my paint to be thick to where it completely covers up that wood grain. Now the red did come out a little more on the pinkish side. But it was a lot darker and closer to the red color. But I just really wanted that wood grain so or to come through so 
I didn't really mind that they were thinner and I mean you guys can use any colors you can paint them solid to where you use a thicker paint and they don't show any of the wood grain I just love the wood grain look so that's why I did this this is just to give you guys inspiration once they do dry I do go in on some of them and add some more paint where I thought maybe you know it was a little thinner and I wanted wanted to darken it up a little bit but like I said this is just inspiration you guys can paint these you can you know use Mod Podge and tissue paper and go over them it's really up to you and your style and what you like now here I'm just going over the green one and the reason I wanted all four of these to be different colors is because once this is all put together I want to be able to switch it up and change it for each holiday or if I'm just tired of the color then I can change it and it's never going to be the same and I will never get tired of it with being able to switch up the colors and the way it looks now I know I have seen some of these done to where they paint them all one color which if that's what you like that's what you can do it's really all up to you guys it's up to you and your style your opinion and everything this is just what I chose to do because I tend to get very bored with the decor now here I'm using the Waverly wax I give it a real good coat and then I go over and wipe down the excess with a baby wipe just to remove any of the leftover wax that was on top and then on all of these I do go around all the edges the inside of the heart because you will see all that and I wanted to make sure that everything was nice and coated and cohesive and everything just to give it a very well finished look now you don't have to do that that was just my thought my opinion and what I wanted to do with mine and really I mean you don't even have to do anything to these you could leave the wood completely alone and just do the regular wood now these are the thin plastic cutting mats from Dollar Tree now one side of it is really shiny and the other side is more of a matte color and sort of opaque looking that's the side that I want facing outwards for mine and I'm just cutting these down and getting them to the size to where they're going to completely cover the back of my mat if there's a little overhang that's fine because I will go in later and trim that down to where it all is nice and even and in these cutting mats you get two per pack now right here I'm just going to take my hot glue gun and lay down my hot glue pretty quick because once that plastic hits it it instantly starts setting up because the plastic is so much colder than the hot glue and then on this one I did have to tack it in a few spots because I didn't think that the hold was very good in a few spots but it wasn't that bad now here I take and cover like the L and the O or just the L and I stack them on top of each other and then I come back in and just every so often do the next letter because then plastic cutting mats are so flexible that you can really work in sections and I found that to be a lot easier now here I just have my little Dollar Tree cutting mat and I'm just taking my hobby knife and trimming the edges and getting that plastic cutting mat all 
lined up to where I want it and get it as close as I possibly can to the actual love sign and make it all even. And I'm going to do this for all four of them. If you guys can hear the kids in the background, they're, they were arguing over a game just a minute ago, and I apologize for that, but that's why my channel is DIY Rowdy House. I have five kids, and it gets rowdy, especially on the weekends. Now, once I have those all tidied up and flush and even, I am going to start gluing these together. Now, on this first one, I glued it down, and then I realized, oh, I glued it in the wrong spot. And you'll see here in just a second where I realized that. But what we're going to do is we're going to glue these together. And we are going to make a lantern out of these or a lantern box. And that's where I realized that I glued them in the wrong spot. So I just real quickly pulled it up. And the glue hadn't fully set, so it was real easy to remove the glue and get everything, you know, figured out and back on track. And guys, crafting, you make mistakes and everything else. It's It happens. Don't get frustrated with it. Sometimes some of the mistakes can turn turn into the best qualities of your projects and everything it just you just got to work with it roll with the punches pull something apart start over and everything there is no perfection in crafting I make mistakes constantly and have to fix my mistakes but that's just part of it now here, once I get these two glued together, I did glue them on the outside edges of that bottom word. Now here I'm just taking and using the glue to weld those together. That way I get a very, very good solid hold. And this right here is where you see the mess up. The glue hadn't set up fully. So I just take my little scraper that I got from Dollar Tree and scrape the glue off and then the glue that was on the plastic peeled off pretty easy and now I'm going to put the glue in the correct spaces and slide it down in there and then I had enough flexibility where I just sort of wedged my little spatula handle under there laid my glue down cleaned up the glue that squeezed out and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to go inside the box and I'm going to glue those seams together. That way I have a good structure and it holds it very well. That way if it gets knocked over or bumped or whatever, it's not going to collapse and fall apart on me. Now here I did take the sanding block and sort of sand down the edges just to get rid of the scraggler pieces of glue and stuff and the little stringy bits that come along with hot gluing and I'm just going to take a baby wipe and I take a little section of the baby wipe add whatever color I'm needing and I just go back over to fix some spots that got sanded down a little bit and where it pulled up some of the paint and I just fix those. And once you do this, I mean, you can barely even tell. There was a few spots I did lay it a little bit thicker. But here it is. This is the pink side, the green, the brown, and the red. And you guys can rotate this to fit whatever color or holiday you would like. And I just left the ends of that open. On to DIY number three. Now this is a coffee, the other vitamin C sign I got from Dollar Tree. Now that is glass in there. And right here, I was going to remove the glass. And I get down in this corner and I get some of the glue pried up. I could have heated up the glue 
which probably would have made it easier and I probably would have been able to get it out then with a heat gun or even possibly a hair dryer. I ended up not doing that and was prying on it and cracked the corner. And I, pre I'm pretty sure, yeah, I show you guys where I cracked it. I stopped there and I'm like, okay, we need to figure something else out. And I just take my hobby knife and I did put a little bit of rubbing alcohol on this. It did help loosen up that black paint a little bit but not really enough to matter you probably could uh could use fingernail polish or pure acetone that may help remove that i just use my hobby knife and use the flat blade that's more like a razor blade a razor blade probably would have been a lot faster and i just remove all of those letters because I want that clean slate glass to work with. Now, once I get all this removed, I do take some hot glue and go around where I had removed the glue and where the bottom corner that I broke was at. That way it didn't crack any further or I didn't have, you know, a shard of glass coming out and poking someone or anything like that. So I just seal it back in there real good. There were spots that didn't have no glue. So I also wanted, wanted to do this. That way it was good and secure. That way if it got knocked over, I don't have my glass breaking or falling out or anything like that. Unless it hits something and just breaks the glass. But now here I'm just taking my folk art silver sterling paint and just a little paint sponge brush. And I'm just dabbing this on there to, and I'm sort of pouncing my brush up and down just to get the air bubbles because I think that it gives it a real neat texture. Now I'm taking the praying blue from Dollar Tree and I'm just going in and doing the same thing and I'm not looking for a full coverage or anything like that. I just want that mixture of colors and I end up later on going in with thicker blue because I wanted more of that blue to pop through. And then, once I get that done, I let this dry. Now, I do come back in and do more paint later on after it's fully dried. And it was pulling paint up. That's why I stopped to let it dry. And I, because I did several coats of the blue, but then I didn't quite care for how much blue was showing. And... I was missing a lot of that silver. So I come back in with more of the silver. And I mean guys you can use any color. You can paint it a solid color. You can use scrapbook paper or anything like that. Now here I take my Mod Podge. And as you can see when I'm laying this Mod Podge down. It's peeling some of that paint up. But that doesn't bother me. Because I sort of want some spots to show more silver so I was okay and I actually like go in and really heavily push on my brush to get sort of that distressed look throughout the paint and then I come back in with the silver and use a paintbrush to thin it out and cover those spots where I wanted that silver to peek through more and I just do that. And then I do add some of that praying blue again. Now once I get that paint to where I like it and everything. I take some Dollar Tree vinyl. This is the like shimmery silver one. I just cut me out a square. Fold it in half. 
and then cut a heart out of that half square just like we learned in school and stuff when we were little kids very simple to make a heart just with a pair of scissors you do not have to have a cutting machine to make stuff with that vinyl i mean you could even use the vinyl for the background if you wanted now i'm just taking some jute twine i burn off all of the little fuzzy pieces i'm tacking it down every so often and i'm just using it to sort of write the word love in cursive now once i get that done that's it very very simple very easy and very cheap i hope you guys enjoyed this and i will see you in the next video if you did enjoy my video please hit that like subscribe and let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite i hope you have an amazing day and thank you so much for your support see you in the next one